on the release, moving to the glass. Opportunist on the offensive board. Ernest Bell gets called for the hack. That's the second team foul on Brandon. And Kwiatkowski at the line for two. 16.08 to go, first half. And it is 9-3 in favor of Western after that basket. See Brown having a seat in the bench, checking out. Richard Taminga comes in. That's a good substitution by Craig Boydell, the Western coach, because Chris Brown is a big man, carrying about 255 pounds, 260 pounds, so you're up by seven early in the game. The perfect time to give the big guy a rest, get him a few minutes, and then bring him back in. Western on an 8-0 run can make it 10 here on this possession. Tweedy will come down. Gets it up ahead. Nadur back out for Tweedy. Quick ball movement here by Western. Now Grizel's going to try to come in. Foul away from the ball. And it is a block. And it goes against Western. 15.49 to go in the first half. Back in a moment. Brandon University. We're where you want to be. Your success. Your future. Your community. At Brandon University, we're about you. Never once did your car ask you for jewelry or flowers. Never once did it ask you if it looks fat or did it get mad at you for leaving the seat up. Your car always gives you exactly what you want. Doesn't it deserve something special in return? On the next Dave Hodge special, Dave talks with three superstars. Wayne Gretzky. I mean, we used to give up six weeks of our life to play in Team Canada tournaments, and I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for guys that don't want to get together for five days. Mario Lemieux. Absolutely. I think it's going to be very special uh, uh, to be able to play for Team Canada and be the captain and be one of the leaders. And the $252 million man, Alex Rodriguez. The Dave Hodge Special, Sunday on TSN. Road to Halifax for the Stangs. Ontario West champions. Their last loss was January 10th against Waterloo. Craig Boydell squad always do a great job. Again, racking up over 30 wins as Brandon has two fine basketball teams matched up tonight. And the last close game that Western played was middle of February. They really dominated their conference. That's the first confident shot that Brandon really has taken in his basketball game and is their court leader, Ernest Bell. Nice smooth jumper off the dribble. Yeah, he has been a little cold in the early going. Rozell dishes off to Tweedy, lobs it inside for Kwiatkowski. Anywhere to go? Nope, not that time. Well, that's a tough matchup for Brandon because Ernest Bell on Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski's going to get a lot of touches. That puts Ernest Bell in a situation where he may get into foul trouble. Weasel head moves it up. Bell with the outside shot, and he hits. Two points. He's smooth, confident player. He's played very well in his tournament. They look to him when things start to break down and get the ball in his hands, and he can deliver. Kwiatkowski to Grozel. And Grozel puts it up. Just missed the three-point attempt. And Weasel head back down. Up for Smith. Tyrone Smith drives in, off the right hand, off the glass, and through. Tyrone Smith. One-point lead for Western. And a whistle on the play. Ball's a little bit wet, so official blows the whistle down, wants to wipe it off. Take a look at Ernest Bell. Charlton Weaselhead makes the pass. Bell nice and smooth, squared up. you got to get out a little bit early than that, make him put the the ball on the floor. Brandon on a 6-0 run. Started 0 for 2, and then Bell hitting his last couple. We'll need a big game from him. GPAC Player of the Year for the last two years from Louisville, Kentucky. 
Cats ball. 14-20 to go first half. And Weaselhead will set the floor. Brandon can take the lead here. Little fake, and then Smith tries to drive in. And he gets called for traveling. Brandon with four turnovers so far. And again, I'm going to be curious to see how they shoot from the outside in this game because they, they didn't look great yesterday in the quarter shooting from the outside. Oh, Paul, they're not a great outside shooting team. Uh, they can score the ball, but they have problems if you reduce them to outside shooting. Ford put the attempt up. That didn't fall. Weasel head back down quickly, and he'll draw the contact from number 21, Cheeto Nadur. Nador reaching in from behind. Western foul, the center of the dirt. His first team foul number three. And Smith will inbound. And a little what little dampness in the floor that they'll wipe up before we continue. Ball gets lobbed down towards the low post, trying to bust in there is Phillips. Sat in the rim, did not drop, and goes out of bounds. And Western will take over. Hey, Donald Phillips made a good, strong move. That's a tough shot always. When you make that ferocious move to the basket, and then you try to gingerly just lay it on the front of the rim. Always good if you can get an angle to the glass, get it up on the backboard. Wyatkowski. Port works it across, Kwiatkowski puts it up, over, smooth, stroke for three. Four-point four lead for Western. Western, number two ranked team in the country. Ernest Bell looking for a bit of room, puts it up. Going to have to repaint the rims after this game. Uh, Endor working hard on the, on the backboards. Ball gets lobbed up there towards Brown. Now Brown again on the putback. Gets it. And there you see the strength of Chris Brown. He turns, got caught underneath the basket, missed the shot. But look at this, look at the breadth of those shoulders and the strength. Right here, miss stays with it. Doesn't get up very high, but how are you gonna get around in order to defend that? Six foot eight, 280 pounds. And and gifted a foot. He's, He's got good footwork. He sees the court very well. When you give him the basketball inside, he's got a nice touch in terms of passing the ball to his teammates. So he pick up the assist as their postman. Weston extending a little bit of pressure here. Phillips gets it up, driving in is Smith. Tried to lay it in off the rim. On the putback, the basket goes to Bell. And Bell, after a cold start, heats up. He has six points. There's Brown. Roselle. 15 on the clock. Roselle looking for some help. Can't find an open man. Finally does. Court. Eight seconds on the clock from the corner. Three-point attempt. Clangs off the rim. Rebounded by Bell. And the Cats take over. Ernest Bell got up on that defensive rebound. Mitchell. Little fake. Dishes down. Good look for Smith. And wasn't able to capitalize there. Port coming back down. Five-point lead for Western. Chetto Nadur. Dishing back for Port. Nadur comes off the screen and then is quickly covered again. Into Brown on the turnaround. Oh, nice touch from the big man. Got that feather touch. You look at all that strength and bulk and yet he's got a nice soft release on that shot. Nine points for Brown. He topped 10 29 times this year. Best game of the year was a 25-point affair against Max. And Western on the board, and Grizel comes back down. Nadur. Court. Long range. And off the rim in the three-point attempt. Seven-point lead for Western. Tough release. When you make that shot, you got to have people crashing the boards. Weaselhead lost the ball. And almost stole it back. 
But he will get called in the foul with 11.07 to go. Brown, a big man, but with a nice touch. Look at this. Turns around. Soft hands. He has nine points. Back in a moment. Hold on. We've got more prizes. For the student who sells the most candy, a weekend pass to Coaster Kingdom. To get out there. The new Passat. It only looks like a million bucks. I grew up to a single parent in the projects, uh, in government housing. My wife, her father was shot and killed when we were in the university. Her sister uh, died at 37 years old of cancer. Everybody has trials. No one is exempt from that. There are reasons that I could be down, but I think the difference is, is that I have a hope in Jesus Christ. Discover the power to change. It's cheering on the home team. Mm -hmm. It's the emotion. It's a thrill. A thrill. It sucks against them. Coast to coast. Just like being there. Being there. See it? Live it. TSN. The next time on The Business of Sports. NASCAR on the fast track to spectacular success. But can it withstand the loss of an icon? Join host Bob McCown for the business of sports Sunday morning on TSN. The World Figure Skating Championship coming up. It all starts on Monday on CTV, 9 Eastern, 8 o'clock Central Time. You a big, you a big figure skating guy? Figure skating is very popular. You didn't answer my question, though. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Ch I'm Mr. Chairman, in the advice of my attorney, I will <laughs> ignore to answer that question. Decline. Here's Tweedy. Off to Grozel. Oh, nice dish by Grozel down in there for Kwiatkowski, and the play disintegrates after that. And again, some moisture in the ball. That's the delay. There's like eight towels within a, a two-second walk, and he's using his shirt to wipe the ball off. There's an awful lot of moisture in this game. They're wiping balls off. They're scrubbing up the free throw line. It's too early in the game to sweat that much. Smith off the chung. Here's Mitchell. Over to Smith. Nine seconds in the shot clock. Chung gets a look and cut the rim. Roselle. Nice move. This is off. What a drive by Roselle. It's a terrific move by Roselle. Aaron Mitchell just turned his head and looked away. Jimmy Roselle put the Jets on and went to the basket. Chung moves it up. Mitchell. Little fake and trying to get in is Phillips. Goes back out. Long range attempt from Chung. And finally rolls through. Smith gets the basket. Seven point lead for Western. 9.44 to go first half. Kwiatkowski. Back for Tweedy. Nadur. Kwiatkowski, 10 seconds in the shot clock. And whistle away from the play. Here we see Weston's point guard, Jimmy Grizzelli. He sees the defensive set. He starts to accelerate. Once he gets in the point, you take a look here. Number 54, Aaron Mitchell, but it's too late. He took his eye off the ball just for a split second. Grizzelli splits him. Easy bucket. Ball turned over to Brandon, and with the drive, laying it up, was Tyrone Smith. Well, Smith doing a good job penetrating to the basket. He's going hard. The lid's been on the basket on a couple of his shots, but you got to like that when you're on the sideline and you're Jimmy, Jerry Hemmings. you got to have a player who will take it on their shoulders to break down the defense on the dribble penetration. And makes it a three-point play. 
And we get a couple of substitutions. Four-point lead for Western. And Brown into Tweedy. Here's Brozell. Little fake by Tweedy, drives in. Didn't quite pan out. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Tweedy gets it down baseline. And now up off the glass, Brown had the chance. And it's pulled down. Cats come back down. Here's Smith. Drives in. Lays it up. And back quickly comes Grizel. And Grizel tried to bounce it away. It was slapped away from him. And here's Smith. Eight and a half minutes to go first half. Neither team really in a flow. Western handling the basketball well. They're trying to spread the court. But all too often at the end of their time on the clock, they're not getting the highest quality shot that they're capable of. And Brandon just not in sync offensively. Mitchell for three. Aaron Mitchell for three. And it's a one-point lead now for Western. Here's Grozell. Up for Port. Tweedy for Grozell. Little fake, drives into the paint, gets it across. Solomon put puts it up, that didn't fall. And this is Smith. Smith sets the floor. Gets it over to Mitchell, and Mitchell puts up the air ball. Time out on the floor, 7.36 to go in the first half, a one-point lead. Second-ranked Western leading. St. Mary's University, make us your choice. I thought the university had a lot of support for athletes. In Canada, definitely this was my number one choice. I went into business my first year and I know St. Mary's is known for its business. A lot of my uh, friends have gone to St. Mary's before me, like a year or two older than me, and they'd really enjoyed their experience. St. Mary's University, make us your choice. The idea behind Nescafe Frothy. So rich, so frothy. The dessert of coffees. Nescafe. Standard Life can help you now to realize your childhood dreams and more. And turn your investments into a roaring success. Standard Life. Profit from our knowledge. Western leading Brandon by one, and during our timeout in the huddle, Craig Boydell having this to say to his team. And then after that, just sort of stay in continuity. What we don't want to do is get jammed up in the middle, take him all the way down the bottom, then they're in a fronting situation. Then if they take the help up with Andy, we got an easy lob. Okay, if they don't, we skip and look back down in. Don't just stand on the weak side, because I can't put a lot of ground. Right. And I want to thank Craig for putting the microphone on after all so we can listen into the huddles. And here's Port. Tweedy, way back. Not going to hit from there. Works it up for Grozel. Comes off the screen but right into traffic and draws the contact. And Bell will take the foul, Brandon his Bell, second. Bell, his second, team foul number five. That's the fifth team foul on Brandon. 7.20 to go, first half. One-point lead for Western. Right 
And the ball comes in right down in the low post for Kwiatkowski, who battled his way up. He's tough down there, Paul. He's got the size. He goes about 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He's got good upper body strength, and he's quick. He gets down on the block. He's tough to handle. He had 18 games this year with 20 or more points. There's the alley-oop. There was an alley, but the oop didn't quite pan out. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Smith. Little fake. Drives in. Dishes off. Walton puts it up. Rolls did not drop. And do they make the goaltend call there? Yeah, offensive goaltend. Yeah. So a one-point lead for Western. And Brown is going to take it. Take a look at the shot here as it gets up on the on the backboard. Gets in the rim and in the cylinder. Up by Kowski. Our masters both go after it. And that's what the discussion is about right now. So they take the two points off the board for Brandon. So it is now 22-19. Offensive goal 10. Basket doesn't count. And Brown will move it in. Here comes Brozell. Kwiatkowski. Oh, nice read there by Masters. He almost stole it, but not quite. And then they get burned with the three-pointer. It's always a dangerous pass when you throw cross court because the basketball is in the air for so long, defenses can split and sometimes deflect and get a steal. That was Mark Porter nailed the three. He's the best three-point shooter on Western. Shot 47% this year from beyond the arc. And here's Kwiatkowski. Six-point lead for the Stangs. Nadur. Back for Port. Looking for a lane is Nadur. And loses possession. And the Cats come back down with just under six minutes to go, trailing by six. Smith. Over to Masters. Mitchell. Trying to shake the coverage. 15 on the shot clock. Masters goes up. Three-point attempt doesn't fall. And the foul, and Western will take over. Brandon foul, Scott Wall. Take a look at the cross-court Pierce here. Ball starts here. Here's Josh Masters right here. He's going to shoot the gap and try to get the steal. He just misses it. And the ball goes into Port's hands. Excellent outside shooter. Steps back behind the arc and buries the three. This is Grozel. Comes off the screen. Tries to dish off. Ball gets slapped away from him. Brandon coming down with numbers. Smith tried to come in. The ball goes off him. And the foul call. And that is going to go against Mark Port, I believe. The Port came up from behind and tried to flick at the ball. Wind up getting Tyrone Smith from behind. Tyrone Smith playing a very energetic game. He's making his presence known on the offensive end of the court. Getting out ahead on the fast break. Continuing to penetrate to the basket. It's caused some problems for Western. Chris Pasley coming into the game, and Scott Walton checks out. And Smith will take his second shot. Two for two. And it's a four-point lead for Western. A Brandon extending their defense after those free throws, trying to pick up the energy on the defensive end of the floor. Roselle put it over for Port. And miss that attempt. Ball goes out. Brandon will take over. Hey, 
I don't know whether it's because there's not a, a home team per se, but the building a lot more subdued than it was for the first game of the semifinals. Well, obviously with St. of X, a local team from the Atlantic Conference in the first game, the building was electrified with energy, and it's difficult for the crowd to identify now which way they're going to go. They're in the process, and usually are in the first half of a game like this, of seeing which team wins their hearts, and then they pick it up in the second half. And another foul there that is going to go against Western. Sixth team foul against Western. Tex Phillips has two shots. Tex Phillips at the line. The foul against Nick Salmons. Salomons, pardon me. Brandon likes to extend the defense after a made free throw. So if you're Brandon coach Jerry Hemmings, you want this shot to go in. Usually they'll stay up, try to bring some pressure and see if they can generate some steals and turnovers. And here's Grozel. Kwiatkowski. Back up for Nadir over to Grozel. Three-point lead for Western. And that one rims out in Nadur. And Western will make another substitution here. Chris Brown's going to come back into the game. You know, the pace of this game, Paul, really favors the Western Mustangs because Western's the kind of team, particularly on the offensive end, they like to spend time with the basketball. They like to take the ball to one side of the court, get the defense to establish, reverse to the other side of the floor, take a look for an option. If nothing's there, they'll reverse it again. That consumes seconds on the time clock. With Brandon Bobcats, they're the kind of team that likes to get more touches in the game. They're more comfortable when they're getting a lot of shots up on the glass. They're not a great shooting team, but they can rebound the glass. So when you reduce the possessions because you spend time with the basketball, you frustrate a team like Brandon, and that's what's happening here with the Western Mustang. Ernest Bell coming back into the game for Brandon. Aaron Mitchell checks out. And Brandon will take over here. Western putting it out of bounds. Now, sometimes it's a double-edged sword because one of the things that happens and has happened in the last few minutes of this game is in order to overcome that frustration, the Bobcats have tried to pick up their defensive energy. That's a route to getting their hands on the basketball more times throughout the game. So they're starting to get out into the passing lanes, extending the defense full court a little bit, try to generate some action on the defense. Smith puts it over for Phillips. Tex Phillips just missing there. And a foul call. Bell with a push. And Western will take over. Brandon foul. Yeah, that's, and that's that is three fouls on Bell. Yeah, that's a big foul because Ernest Bell is absolutely key to the success of the Brandon Bobcats. And he spent some time on the bench. Jerry Hemming's trying to protect him from that third foul before the halftime. But he elected to put him back in. With 4.05 on the clock, Bell picks up the third foul. It's always a difficult decision. But in a close ball game, Sometimes you can sit your star till a half. Two fouls, you come out, you get my fresh start in the second half, you can play defense aggressively, he's got a whole half to consume three. Now the tide is reversed and that's changed up a little bit. Takes him out with 4.05 to go. Well, he really has no choice there, Paul. He just can't afford to get the fourth foul in the first half. Three-point lead for Western. And here's Smith. Taking a look, comes off the screen, feeds it over to Mitchell. Back out, the ball is stolen. Nador will come in with the layup and the basket. That's terrific defensive anticipation by Nador. He read the situation. He knew where the outlet pass was. He laid back just long enough to get the ball in the air, and then he shot the gap. Five-point lead for Western. Masters takes a look, dribbles into the paint, oh up off the right hand, didn't drop, and you could you could hear Masters go, oh my God, when that one didn't drop, he couldn't believe it. Masters a little colder than what he is used to, and meanwhile, going the other way, anticipation like this by Nadur has Western up by five.
everybody. Welcome back to the TSN Newsroom. I'm David Amber. The Tampa Bay Lightning have signed holdout goaltender Nikolai Habibulin to a four-year, $15.75 million contract. The deal includes $750,000 remaining for this season. As well, there was lots of action in the NHL on Saturday. Let's start Sharks at the Kings into OT 0-0 until Glenn Murray to Brian Schmelinski. He tickles the twine. Kings win it. One zip. How about the Red Wings and Avalanche? Great battle here. Late third, Greg DeVries with a point shot. Sean Podine is there for the rebound. His 15th of the, of the, is the game winner. 5-3 abs final. Rangers and Flyers. Flyers on the power play. Dan McKillis is shot. Deflects in off Kim Johnson. His 13th gives the Flyers a 2-1 win as well. The Canadians in tough against Boston. Two zips. Sergei Samson off two goals in that one. Still in the first period. Pavel Burry has given the Florida Panthers a 1-0 lead over the Maple Leafs. That's also in the first. Sabres and Capitals 0-0. More basketball after this. Scott Walton to Brandon Bobcats wants to make this pass to Tyrone Smith, but look at Chet on the door of the Western Mustangs. He sees the pass come and anticipates it. As soon as the ball is released, he shoots the gap, gets the steal, and heads down court. Gets all the way and converts the play for an easy two. Defense to offense, Chet Endor. Both teams pretty cold from the floor, though, Brian, in this one. Brandon shooting 32% from the floor, and Western 42.3% so far. Well, Western is able to function better when you get infrequent shots on the time clock. Brandon really frustrated. They'll wind up taking perhaps some poor shots or the wrong players are taking shots because they're not used to not shooting that often. They want to get more releases. So this pace of game where Western controls and dominates the basketball, again, favors them. It's difficult to shoot high percentages when you can't take lots of shots and stay in a groove. Roselle lobs it in. And the big guy, Chris Brown, continues to battle there in the low post. Well, Chris Brown did everything right there except position himself anywhere but under the basket. He got caught directly under the rim and just couldn't get an angle to release that basketball inside. Weasel head over to Mitchell. And that's a little penetration there from Smith, but wasn't able to finish. Roselle dipping and diving there. Thought he had a lane, but that gets closed off. Back for Tweedy. And the holding call against the Bobcats. Well, we talked about defensive patience early in the basketball game. This is a situation here now where you start to see the Bobcats get anxious. They want to gain position. They want to get into the passing lane. They want to get it to flex and try to get the basketball back. And they're spending a lot of time on defense, and that raises the opportunity to commit a foul. It also puts your team in foul trouble over the course of the game a lot earlier than you normally would be. Kwiatkowski at the line after that foul by Tex Phillips. Six-point lead for Western. Here's Weaselhead. Gets it up to Smith. Up into the high post for Phillips. Back for Weaselhead. He's got the lane. Comes in, but the ball was knocked away from him. But Western will take it over. Here's Tweedy. Just over two minutes to go. First half. Roselle. Smith's hand in his face. Tries to drive it against Smith. Tweedy. Working his way into the low post as Brown muscles his way up, and the ball drops. Big tip there. Well, he worked and hurt every bit of those two points. Back comes Smith. Goes in hard, didn't get the basket. See Chris Brown here, excellent footwork. Establishes in the post from the high side, drop steps and spins low and misses the shot, but look at him stick with it. Gets the tip, raises his hands, credit him with the two points. And then the offensive foul coming back the other way, and Western takes over. Brown with 11 points. Yeah. 
Here's Grozel. Down baseline for Kwiatkowski. Two points. Weston just great at finding the open player. They exhibit terrific patience on offense. Ten for Kwiatkowski. He passed that mark 27 times this year. Oh, nice drive there. Courageous by Weaselhead as he came in, paid a physical price, but got the basket. Eight-point lead for Western. And a minute to go in this first half. Kwiatkowski lobs it into the low post. Brown spins, puts it up. On the putback, Kwiatkowski with the points. Well, that's a great example of what you do off the high post area when you dump the ball into the low post. Kwiatkowski gave it to Brown and then didn't stand there and watch him execute the move. He crashed to the hoop. Phillips comes in, offensive foul. Brandon Phillips, his second. Donald Tex Phillips right here, lower in the shoulder. Jimmy Grozell holding his spot. Not a great trade-off when you got one of your big inside players, important player, both on the offensive end of the floor and the boards, and then you draw the offensive foul using your 5'7 point guard. This is Tweedy, 30 seconds to go in the half. 10-point lead for Western. Grozell comes in, trying a little behind-the-back pass there to Brown, but that didn't work out. So the Cats can work last shot here. 19 seconds on the game clock. They trail by 10. Maybe just a little confidence booster to head into the locker room. Weaselhead, 8 seconds to go. Puts it back. Passley puts it up. And doesn't get the basket. And time runs out in the first half. So the number two ranked Western Mustangs with a 10-point lead over the third ranked Brandon Bobcats. Well, Brandon's going to have to come out in the second half and regroup. Mentally, they're starting to, to play very tight. they got to loosen up. they got to find that they get Ernest Bell back in the ballgame, build the offense around him, and try to be more patient defensively. Western's got to be pleased. They're getting the kind of shots that they work hard on offense to deliver. And Jerry Hemmings and Craig Boydell both wanting to make points with the officials before time runs out in this first half. It has, in fact, run out, but before they head to the locker room. Frustration for Hemmings and his Cats, who are down by 10. Here's Alex J. Walling with Craig Boydell. I've got the leading coach. Uh, the plan going according to perfection, coach? <laughs> no, no plans go according to perfection. I, I thought our defense is exactly what we needed it to be in the first half. Uh, our offense wasn't. We just, I think we created some good enough shots for ourselves. We just had to start knocking some down. We had some good opportunities inside. We let get away from us. But I think our uh, defense is critical right now for us, and we have to keep that going in the second half because they're going to make a major run, no doubt about it. What about a play by Chris Brown? Well, he's made a couple good plays here right now. He's stepped, I mean, the biggest play is sort of stepping and taking the charge. They've had us down the middle a couple times. And now we sort of fill the gap in the middle, got guys to stand and take the charge, and that's really important for us because they're they're very active down the center of the floor. Okay, thank you, Coach. My pleasure. Okay, there you have the leading coach at hot time. And there we have Chris Brown really leading the way for Western in the first half. He had 11 points and also eight rebounds. So you have a lot of talent around a perimeter, and I haven't seen a, a CIAU basketball team in a long time who could dribble, penetrate, pull up for the shot, and play one-on-one -on -one as well as your team does, yet they're unselfish. Well, they play well together, and, you know, they, there's a veteran unit. We have four fifth-year seniors and two fourth-year seniors, and, and it makes my job a lot easier. Also, if you have a point guard who, in the last four games, two in the uh, AUS, AUS playoffs and two in the Nationals, Randy Knorr has 47 assists and two turnovers. And if you have a point guard like that, he makes you look like a pretty smart coach. <laughs> now, you've won two national titles. You're going to have an opportunity to win your third tomorrow. With that experience, what kind of insight do you have that make one or two things very important when you step into the championship game? Well, I think our team in the locker room today, they, they felt, uh, obviously, you know, a tremendous sigh of relief. Um, you know, get, getting you know through that game, McMaster gave us everything. That was the toughest game we had all year. And, uh, you know, able to, you know, survive it. The guys basically said, look, we're going to come out and play tomorrow. You know, they didn't, they weren't really particularly happy the way they played, especially in the second half. And, and the free throw line cost us a little bit too. But it's a veteran team, and I'm confident they're going to come out tomorrow. This team goes 20-0. 
they win the AUAA championship. They won the first two games in the national, and they tell you they're going to come out and play tomorrow. Well, <laughs> that's why I say this is team. This, this team is a lot of fun to coach. Steve, uh, coach of the year. Uh, a lot of people would say it's about time uh, for you. Was it nice to get the recognition finally? Well, it is, and you know the fact that uh, Stuart W. Aberdeen. His name is on the trophy is special to me. I was very emotional when I made my acceptance speech and uh, Coach Aberdeen coached me and as, as he did uh, Brian Heaney. And uh, he brought me to Canada. He changed my life and I've had a very wonderful life in this country and not only coaching but in so many, many ways. And uh, to, to win an award uh, with that kind of uh, uh, prestige involved and his name on it, uh, certainly was very, very special to me. Well, congratulations, although I got to tell you, Brian, the whole game was saying how much better a coach he was, you know, when he was out here coaching. Well, you know what? He's got three <laughs> national championships. I got to try to match him tomorrow. <laughs> what I remember is Coach Aberdeen used to design all the scoring plays for you, and I had to pass the ball to you. Well, you know what? Just to finish up this one, uh, X, Saint of X, when we came to Acadia, was uh, the team that won, you know, through the 50s and early 60s, was the team to beat. And Coach Aberdeen uh, would not use an X on the board in terms of X's and O's. <laughs> he refused to do it. He put A for Acadia and O for your opponent. And uh, now I'm in the same of X for 26 years, so, you know, uh, but at the same time, I know he's smiling on us right now. Steve, congratulations and thanks for your time. Thank you, Paul. I tell you, Nini and Kinshowski, they should have their own show. We'll be back in a moment. Up in, this, in the second half, and both teams shooting poorly from the three-point line one for ten for brandon and two for eleven for western western one half away from a berth in the championship final tomorrow back in a moment we got to get bail involved in the offense somewhat and we had a lot of good shots we've just been ice cold so we gotta we gotta knock some shots down because what happened they got such a good rebounding team when we don't when we don't get we don't knock shots down we, we got nobody getting to the boards all right jerry thank you very much and good luck sir all right there's coach jerry hemmings and now back to brian and paul so how come they're not getting to the boards well, they're not getting to the boards because they're standing around. You work the boards in two ways. You play position defense, and you block the man off, and you command presence on the glass, or you've got to move on offense. You've got to find the lane to the boards. You can't stand and anticipate any basket will be made. you got to crash the boards. Weston does a good job of positional defense, and they're moving without the ball to the boards. Quiet kowski has got a couple of putbacks on the offensive boards. And conversely, West are doing a very good job on the boards, and they are being led by Chris Brown, who has 11 points and 8 rebounds. Well, Chris Brown is a big man, and he's the epitome of a positional basketball player. He'll find his spot, and you're not going to move him off. If he gets an angle for the carom, and he rebounds the ball very well. He's been a real presence in this basketball game in many ways. Defensively, Craig Boydell pointed that out, but also rebounding, and he's contributed 11 points as well. So Brown and Bell match up, a couple of key players in the first half. That might be some, something unexpected if you're a Brandon Bobcat fan because Ernest Bell is certainly capable of putting 18, 19, 20 points up during a basketball game, but his effectiveness was certainly Brandon limited Ball. by the lack of playing time. He got into early foul trouble, and he starts the second half with three. And Brandon with the ball to start this second half, trailing by 10. And the drive through traffic there by Tex Phillips. And the foul call. So that's, that's a good move by Brandon to start the second half. They want to be aggressive to the rim. They want to try to create something offensively. Donald Tex Phillips got the basketball down on the floor, accelerated to the goal. He's going to get himself to the free throw line. The worst thing Brandon could do, or any basketball team, when they're trying to make a comeback, is start out early after the break and start launching outside shots. So if Brandon gets inside, they tap the basket on the dribble, good things can happen for them. Phillips 63% from the line during the regular season. Tipped. And Brandon maintaining possession despite missing the second foul shot. Here's Weaselhead. Sets the floor. A little bounce pass there into the high post for Bell. Trying to get loose. It goes up. And the two. So a three-point possession with the foul shot and then the basket on the rebound. Nadur up to Tweedy. Works it up, Nadur comes in, up off the left hand, taps at it, Kwiatkowski with it, works it over, Grozel for three, canned it. 
Very nice play. Presence of mind by Andy Kwiatkowski. Got the offensive rebound. Realized he didn't have anything clear showing inside. Turned around and found Grizel slipping down the sideline. And the lead restored to 10. Good hustle there by Kwiatkowski, but it wasn't rewarded ultimately. He didn't come up with the ball. Masters working it inside there. Tuck going underneath. Walton trying to get loose. Taps it up, and finally it falls for the Cats. But Brandon very aggressive on the boards since the halftime break. They've come out. They've got some things they want to get accomplished. One of them is rebound the ball better. Scott Walton getting credit for that basket. Nadur back out. Grozel, little fake into the paint and dished off, but the foul call underneath. Yeah, and that is going to go against Walton. Take a look in here, the Western Mustangs. They're going to have an opportunity to rebound the basketball. And Dora goes inside, and Kwiatkowski goes right down the middle. He gets the rebound and finds his teammate, Grizel, sliding down the sideline behind the three-point arc. He buries it. Coverage pretty tight. Finally, the ball comes in. Nadora had to look there for a second, elected not to put it up. Here's Kwiatkowski, lobs it down into the low post. Brown trying to fight his way loose, lost his balance, end the ball. And it goes out off the cat player. Western will take over. Brandon moving down, double teaming Chris Brown on the lob pass inside. They don't want to allow him to gain an isolation opportunity. Nadur for three, nothing but net. Chetto Nadur is a player who complements the talents of the other players on the floor. He'll do a little rebounding, a little defense, and a little shooting, but you have to respect him. Nice drive there and finish by Masters. A Craig Boydell will not be happy with that defensive rotation by Weston. There's nothing that drives a coach to craziness than giving up two, three dribbles and an easy layup. You've got to get weak side help. Nine-point lead for Western. Brown looks around, decides to try to muscle his way in, draws the contact. And he gets called for traveling, actually. But Chris Brown thought that he drew the contact. He thought there was going to be a foul call, but the call was that he dragged his pivot foot, committed the traveling violation before the contact occurred. Here's Weaselhead. Little bounce pass down to the low post. Walton trying to get loose. Off the glass and the basket. That was a nice move by Walton down inside because he didn't rush the release. He gained his balance, then he used his upper body strength to get the basketball up on the glass. Goes out to Nadur. Fourteen seconds in the shot clock. Rozelle with weasel head in his face. Six seconds left. Five on the shot clock. Rozelle may have to do it himself. Puts it up. And didn't get it. And whistle on the play. Foul on the Bobcats. Well, that's, that's a real big foul. Ernest Bell is trying to wave at Jerry Hemming saying, leave me in the game, leave me in the game. It's Ernest Bell's fourth foul. Well, he's signaling to the bench, leave me in the game. Well, there were less than five seconds on the shot clock when Western had the basketball. Giselle had nowhere to go. He stepped out, tried to get around Bell, got on his feet, and Bell came from behind and fouled him after the release of the ball and made the contact. You know, when you're playing with three fouls, Paul, you have to exhibit a little bit of... A little bit of judgment in those cases and know when it's your time to be physical and when it's not. Roselle three-point attempt, crashing the boards there. Kwiatkowski after the ball, comes back up for Brown, he misses. And pulling it down as Masters will start back for Brandon. Seven-point lead for Western. And stepping into the post and putting it up was Ronald Leslie. Leslie coming in off the bench to replace Ernest Bell, and he gets the basket. But sometimes you got to have a player come in and give you a lift, especially when your star is in trouble. Leslie looked pretty confident. Looks like he's ready to play. Oh, how did he get Chris open? Brown. But Chris Brown was wide open. Well, Scott Walton fronted him in the low post. When you step defensively in front of the low post player, if you don't get weak side help, you throw the lob pass. There's nobody there. Turn and put it up. 13 points for Brown. He had the block there. But it wasn't enough. Walton gets the basket. He has seven points. Walton's doing a good job inside, offensively and defensively. He's working hard in there. The 10-point halftime lead for Western. Dwindling down to five points. 
Wyckowski into the traffic, step back and put it up, got the rim. And Weaselhead bringing it back down. Can make it a two or three point game here. And Kwiatkowski's going to get called there for reaching in. That'll be his second foul. And timeout on the floor with 15.33 to go in the second half. It is 42-37 Western leads. 40 CIAU championships, but the banners on the wall are only part of the tradition. At UVic, students are also challenged in the classrooms and laboratories by award-winning teachers and scholars. Students involved in Canada's third largest co-op program can jumpstart their career with work experience in over 40 academic areas. On the court, in the classroom, or in the workplace, at UVic, we challenge minds and change worlds. For people who are demanding. Extremely. Schick Extreme 3. Triple Blade Performance. Pivoting Head. Perfect grip. And best of all, after a whole bunch of great shaves, you just toss it and serve up a new one, which is rather convenient. Extremely. Schick Extreme 3. Schick. Schick. Premier events in the sporting world, the World Figure Skating Championship starts Monday on CTV, 9 Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Take a look at Chris Brown, a big player from Weston, establishing himself down right here in the low post. Scott Walton comes out on top of him. You'll see the nice pass over the top by Tweedy. Right here, looks inside. There's the defensive player high side, right over the top. Nobody down inside to help. And Brown has nice hands, good catch, turn and put back. Masters works it in, weasel head. Shakes off the coverage, gets it back. A good look for Pashley, who hits three points. And it is now a two-point lead for Western. It was 10 at the half. Nador puts it up. And Brandon with a chance to take the lead here, or at least tie it. Weaselhead. Lobs it down, three-point attempt. Off the rim, that would have given Brandon the lead. That's a good situation. Exhibit just a little bit of patience. Brandon's made a real good run here. They picked up the defensive intensity, doing a job on the boards. Now they got to make sure they get quality shots. Grozel into the high post for Kwiatkowski. Back over for Grozel. Three points. Oh, beautiful clutch shot by Grozel. He got, has eight points. He's got a lot of confidence. He's a diminutive point guard. And he runs this ball club very well. But if you don't respect his outside shot, he'll hurt you. Weaselhead, the other point guard, comes in. This is off. Shot came up there from Pasley. That didn't fall. Here's Nadur to Grozel. Long pass up ahead. Tweedy coming in. Pulls up there just inside the three-point line. Back for Kwiatkowski. Good pressure by Masters, forcing the turnover. He comes in. Offensive foul. Great work by Grizel to get back there and establish position. But Grizel did a terrific job. He lined Masters up. He tried to change direction twice. Grizel kept giving real estate, giving real estate. Then he established, once he was sure, he had Masters' thought in mind. You see here, Masters alone. Look at Grizel hustle back. Now he tries to establish. Masters leaves too early. You've got to get around the defensive player when you're that far from the hoop. He couldn't go anywhere but put himself into trouble. Nadur. Back for Port. Here's Grozel. Hit a nice three-pointer in the last possession. Thought about trying there. 12 seconds in the shot clock. Nadur with it. Eight seconds in the clock. He's going to drive in. Has a lane. Gets to the basket but can't get it to drop. And Brandon will take over and... A foul, and Nadur will take the foul. That's his second. Both teams working very hard inside. Nador in a situation right there where he came off the rebounding action, reached in, committed the foul. foul well, Brandon three. has been able to close this gap in the scoring margin, make this a close ball game. It's only five points now, and they've done most of the damage without the benefit of Ernest Bell, their leading scorer in the ball game. Ernest Bell on the bench with four fouls. Winner of this game will meet St. FX, the defending national champions, tomorrow. 
Bounce pass coming in there to Scott Walton, who's come on strong in the second half. Gets piled on there. And jump ball, possession arrow. And it goes to Western. Brown checking back into the game. And just wiping a little moisture off the floor. Extended defense here from Brandon. Port comes in. Here's Kwiatkowski. Has Brown down in the low post he's trying to establish. Battling against Walton. Brown takes the feed. Gets it back for Kwiatkowski. Who hits? As soon as the ball went to Brown, he drew the double coverage. That opened up Kwiatkowski. Very unselfish play by Chris Brown. He has confidence, of course, in Andy Kwiatkowski, their leading scorer, the leading scorer in the CIAU. And you see the game that Kwiatkowski plays. He doesn't force the option. 15 points for Kwiatkowski. Pasley hitting there. Six-point lead for Western. Roselle looking for a lane. Back for Tweedy to Port. Roselle for three. Kwiatkowski with the board and the putback. Still doesn't drop. And it is gobbled up by Walton. Walton continuing to do a good job, but he's getting fatigued right now. He's worked very hard in the second half. Tex Phillips comes in and travels. Twelve twenty-one to go, second half, six-point lead for Western. Kwiatkowski back out for Port and foul away from the ball. That's going to go against Walton, I believe. He gets called for the push. That's his second foul. Brandon foul Scott Walton, his second. Team foul number four. The fourth team foul. And the play gets run. The ball comes to Kwiatkowski. Tried to put it up. Was bumped a little. Tries in the rebound. Drives the contact. And the foul against the Cats. But Andy Kwiatkowski really pursues the basketball. Made the hard cut that caught underneath the basket, behind the backboard. Had to take an errant shot, but didn't just stop at that. He continued to hunt down the basketball, got the missed shot, wound up turning and getting the foul. Look at him inside here. Didn't have an angle, released the basketball, but got his hand up. Got the big wingspan, turned, and was able to draw the foul. Seven-point lead for Western, and they want to... Brandon, rather, wants to get Aaron Mitchell back into the game. And Kwiatkowski comes out, and coming in for Western is Nick Sommers. Eight-point lead for the Stangs. Here's Smith. Mitchell. Gets it across to Smith. Nice little fake there. Puts it up. Doesn't get rewarded with the basket. Ball goes out, and it'll be a Brandon ball. It went out. Bouncing off of Chris Brown. Kwiatkowski on the bench right now, but he has 15 points, including a nice setup here from Brown for the three. All right. Could you give me a hand? Uh, not right now. People's thumbs have gotten bigger. Sweetheart, go help your father. Grandpa? That's because they've been rolling their thumbs a lot. Playing Tim Horton's Roll Up the Rim to Win. You could win one of 20 Pontiac Pack Aztec all-wheel drive. 100 Sony home theaters. 500 cash prizes of $1,000. 5,000 Royal King barbecues. And millions of Tim Horton's prizes. Everyone ready to roll? Let's do it. She's a real beauty. She never bugs you about spending so much time with the guys. She never complains about you watching football. She thinks a little gas is a good thing. Maybe she isn't a she after all. Here's to the perfect relationship. Here's how to keep it that way.
It's a sure sign of spring and the golf season to come when the Players' Championship hits the links in Florida and your TV on TSN. Boasting one of the top fields on the PGA Tour, the Players' Championship is one of the toughest and most sought-after titles. And they'll all be there to dethrone last year's champion, Hal Sutton. TSN is proud to present the first two rounds of the Players' Championship. And stay tuned for the third and final rounds on CTV. The Players' Championship begins Thursday on TSN. CIAU Coach of the Year, Steve Kuchowski, will lead St. Francis Xavier to defend its championship tomorrow against the winner of this game between Brandon and Western. You can see it live on TSN. Neither team exactly shooting the lights out in this one, both shooting in the mid to high 30s from the floor. Yeah, the, the, the shooting touch has definitely deserted both teams. They're both playing very tight. And from the three-point line, Brandon's really struggling, having a hard time. You know, he's just saying, when you're not making them, you shouldn't be taking them. So maybe getting inside, getting to the basket, get fouled, try to get to the foul line, generate a different type of offense. This is Port getting it up for Tweedy. Tweedy trying to bounce it down into the low post, but it goes out of bounds, and Brandon will take over. 11.23 to go. Brandon trailing by eight. Now, you get a few times to make a run in a basketball game. This is one of those times where Brandon right now has to hold at eight. they got to reverse the trend. If they've got another run in them, they've got to make it here because if it goes the other way, they're going to find themselves in having the clock as a big enemy. This goes into double digits deficit. Walton puts it up. Right up over top of Brown. Nine points for Walton. Here's Groselle for Western. Six-point lead for the Mustangs. Groselle back for Tweedy. Mitchell out to watch him. Groselle, baseline, drives in. Nowhere to go there with the shot. Ten seconds left on the clock. Solomons puts it up. Rolls around and drops. Nice move down the middle with your brand, and you can't be pleased with your defense. You can't allow dribble penetration right off the middle of the foul line. You've got to get primary defenders and help defenders. Smith comes in and draws contact. His silence from Weston right at the foul line. Nobody coming from anywhere. Everybody too late. That's too easy. Solomon's with the basket and then takes a foul, his second foul. So, Coach, when do you bring Ernest Bell back in if you're coaching the Brandon Bobcats? He has four fouls on him, key player on the team. Well, you know, sometimes that decision is predicated on whether or not the player is experienced enough to be able to manage his game time in a situation where his next foul will be his last. If you look at the scoreboard, Jerry Hemmings is putting him in the, in the game now, and I can tell you he's got to have a talk and did have a talk with Ernest Bell and say you've got to manage your judgment defensively. You want him to have defensive presence, but he's got to understand when he's isolated and compromised because he's too important offensively for this team. They've got to have him down the stretch if that's possible. Ernest Bell, a guy who averaged 18.9 points per game and almost nine rebounds during the season. And he is in single digits in both those categories in this game. And also with four fouls. Also, his teammates have to be aware he's in foul trouble. They've got to try to locate and communicate and give him some help. Take some of the pressure off of him defensively. Try and not let him get isolated. Roselle comes in from the high post, pulls up and hits. Jim Roselle. Any time the point guard evades the perimeter defender and penetrates toward the foul line, you've got to step up and get a hand up, especially with a player like Roselle. He's a fine basketball player, but if you come out at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and you got a hand up, it's going to change the shot. Nobody came to challenge. Walton missed there. It's an eight-point lead for Western. Here comes Roselle. Roselle with ten points, eight of them in this half. Knights it in there for Kwiatkowski. Gets his own rebound, puts it up, draws the contact. And he will go to the line. Andy Kwiatkowski really likes to mix it up inside. He doesn't back away from anything. He'll go hard to the goal. He's a strong player. He'll stay in there until something gets settled. Either he's going to get the ball and put it back up in the basket or draw the foul, or it'll go the other way. But he's going to be part of the mix. Fifteen rebounds for Kwiatkowski. He had 17 in the game yesterday. 
and you know, he's not a great leaper. I mean, he's not a player that's dominating this game because he's flying through the air. What he does is he works hard on every possession, defensively or offensively. He pursues the basketball on the glass. That's how you build rebounding stats. Here's Walton, bounces it down into the low post. Bell trying to get loose. It was Walton who ends up getting the basket. Eight-point lead for Weston. Kwiatkowski, 15 seconds in the shot clock, up for Grozel. That's Smith watching him. Grozel comes across, sees a lane, goes towards the basket, and was stuck there by Masters. See Jimmy Grizzell penetrating down the middle. Looks like it's wide open. Masters chases him down. And with that size and leaping ability, gets the basketball blocked and off Grizzell. Well, you got six foot five Masters with the wingspan over top of five foot seven Jimmy Grizzell. The turnaround and up off the fingers of Bell. Underneath for Tweedy. Pulls up, got it. Matt Tweedy. Ten point lead for Western. Driving back in, Smith puts it up. That rolls around. And pulled down, gobbled up there by Kwiatkowski. And Tweedy coming down. Nadur up for Grozel and foul away from the ball. And that is going to go against Tyrone Smith of the Cats. And he gets called in the push. That's his second foul. Team foul number seven. Yeah, team foul number seven. On Brandon. So they're not helping their own cause down by 10, and they're into bonus trouble. And they're into bonus trouble because they've played a high percentage of this time clock on the defensive end of the floor, Paul. That's always part of Weston's strategy. When they spend time with the ball, you've got to have patience defensively, but you also have to challenge the basketball more often, and it leads to foul trouble if you're not skilled at that. NBA action coming up tomorrow on CTV. Starting at noon Eastern time, Shaquille O'Neal and the Lakers going up against the Orlando Magic. And Rod Black will have all the action along with Leo Routens. And meanwhile, we will be here later on in the day with the championship matchup between the St. Francis Xavier X-Men, the defending national champions, against the winner of this game. Western is leading right now by 10 points against Brandon. You know, if Weston should win this basketball game, Paul, and certainly it's not over yet with eight and change on the clock, but it's going to be an interesting matchup because Weston's a mature team. They've got veteran players. They play a particular style that puts them in charge on the offensive end. And St. of X generates an awful lot of offense off of the defensive end. And if they can't get a high turnover percentage, they can't get into transition, it cuts part of their offensive effectiveness away, it could be an excellent basketball game. Well, and unlike last year when you had the Cinderella Brandon team ranked number eight coming into the tournament, making it all the way to the final, uh, things going pretty much according to plan this year. If Western does win, you would have the top two ranked teams in the country, St. FX and the Mustangs. And further thickening the plot, the only team that defeated X during the season all year was, yes. The Western Mustangs. Yes, sir. And let's keep in mind, they did that with Fred Perry Jr. out of the lineup early in the year, but still there's a psychological advantage there when you know that you've matched up against this team and you've beaten them before. Oh, nice little behind-the-back move there, and then finishing off was Josh Masters. Nine-point lead for Western. Rozell, long pass across and a, a little bit too long for Andy Kwiatkowski. It goes out of bounds. Timeout on the floor, 7.48 to go in the second half. Live on TSN, you're watching CIAU Men's Semifinal Action. All kinds of dreams bubble up from fertile imaginations. Investing with Standard Life can help you realize your childhood dreams and more. 
standard life. Profit from our knowledge. If you can't stop here, stop here for 25% off the regular price of Midas BSD brake pads and shoes. They've got a lifetime guarantee and they're the best we've ever offered. They're quieter, they stop faster, and last longer. And if they wear out, we'll provide you with new ones at no charge for as long as you own your car. So for 25% off BSD brakes, go Midas. Cheering on the home team. Mm -hmm. It's the emotion. It's a thrill. A thrill. thrill. It sucks against them. Coast to coast. Just like being there. Being there. See it? Live it. TSN. Dave with quite the hat trick of guests tomorrow. Claude Lemieux, Brent Gretzky, and Chi Chi Rodriguez all coming up. Of course, that would be Mario, Wayne, and A Rod. Although I'm sure Dave could get the other three if he wanted. You day high to get a little you want. Tyron Smith with the basket there. Seven point lead for Western. And Western will move it in. I wonder if the, if the nerves are, are a little high strung in the part of Western. They've had a couple of those in the last. 30 seconds or so, the old 12-foot high pass. Well, what happened in that situation was Brandon came out of the timeout set, and they're bringing an extra level of pressure defensively. They realize with the seven and a half minutes on the clock, they've got to make their move now, and they need the defense to contribute to that move, and Weston just did not react well to that full-court zone trap. Ball comes back to Masters. Masters to Weaselhead, went off the fingertips. Great hustle by both teams. It is going to be picked up. Kwiatkowski going in, and Weaselhead coming back hard. And the foul. <laughs> that was a great play by Charlton Weaselhead. He just refused to allow Andy Kwiatkowski to get to the basket. Weaselhead just got a little cut on Smith there. I mean, there's got to be body contact there. It wasn't a hint of a call. And here goes Kwiatkowski hard, and Weaselhead said, no, you're going to earn that from the free throw line. He went up. He went for the ball. He made the defensive motion for the ball. Clean play, but a hard play. Kwiatkowski hits the first one. He has 20 points. You know, Kwiatkowski is a quintessential scorer, Paul. That's different from a shooter. You get a great shooter that can put 20 points on the scoreboard, and everybody in the arena knows it. Kwiatkowski gets a couple of jump shots, a couple of fast breaks off the layup, gets to the free throw line, gets a couple of putbacks on the offensive glass, and at the end of the night, he's got 20, 24 points. Nine-point lead for Western. Sterling effort there by Masters that doesn't pay off, but then there to help out was Ernest Bell. And ball comes up for Kwiatkowski, and you can see, you're, you're absolutely right, Brian. Brandon has just ratcheted up the defensive pressure here since their last timeout. Well, they tried several different things during the ball game. None of them really gave them the kind of momentum that put them in control of the game. This is their last-ditch effort. It's got to come from the defense. Seven-point lead for Western. Oh, driving in all over the glass is Pasley after the rebound. He just won't be denied and finally drives the contact. The pass he gave a great effort there to keep that basketball alive and try to gain control of it and ultimately got fouled, but he was all along. This is kind of the time in the ball game. you got to have a lot of blue shirts in there working at it. There's Pazzi. Up it goes. There's a lid on the basket for the Bobcats still, but he's working all by himself there. Finally, he draws the foul. Here's Smith. Pazzi. Back up for Smith. Across for Masters. Lobs it up towards the low post. Knocked away. Pastler picks it up. He goes up. And the foul call. And it's going to go against Kwiatkowski, I believe. And that is his third foul. 
Team foul Chris six. And Pasley at the line for two. 6.22 to go. Seven point lead for Western. And Brown comes out of the game. Taminga goes in for Western. And meanwhile, Pasley getting set to take his second shot. Six-point lead for Western. And again, the extended pressure defense. Trying to force a turnover, but that was pulled down. The height of Tomingo was an asset there. He's six foot ten. He was able to reach up and grab that. And a foul on the Cats. Brandon Weaselhead foul. takes his third Charles foul. Weaselhead, his third. Team foul number nine. That's team foul nine on Brandon. And they're they're getting into foul trouble. Ernest Bell, their best offensive player, playing with four fouls. Weaselhead now with three, their best point guard. And Tominga gets to the line. Every foul, of course, you're into bonus. It's been a difficult half. Paul, for either team to get any flow or momentum. A lot of whistles on both ends of the floor. People out of position. People in on the boards late. Contact. And of course, Brandon making every effort to come back. They've picked up the defensive intensity. But if you're not using your feet well enough, you start to clutch and grab and there's stoppages in the game. That's frustrating to players. Well, foul trouble now for Andy Kwiatkowski, who reached in there, and he takes his fourth foul. And timeout called by Western coach Craig Boydell. That's really important because Kwiatkowski, of course, is is very important to the Western offense. With six minutes to go, it's not un, unlikely if he's in the ballgame he pick up that fifth foul. This ballgame's close enough. Brandon comes back and makes it a one-two point tie ballgame. And Kwiatkowski's lost to the Mustangs. It could be a factor. Brown's got to go deep. You're going to throw the ball in bounds. Brown's got to go deep and then come back. We're throwing it in too shallow there. They're not playing. They're just crossing the thing over in the middle. Uh, so let's, uh, yeah, the two-man will look right away. You look right away. If he doesn't get it, you vacate, and the one-man comes to the corner. All right? So you're the five. You're going to go deep. Okay? Two. They come back if you have to. You're one, and you go one and into the corner. Six seventeen to go in the second half, and it's a six-point lead for Western. And what can you pick up out of that discussion? Well, a lot of players know what their numbers are, and basically what Craig Boydell is saying is leave and go away from the pressure and then come back to it from behind. So players have to stay in motion. What they do against pressure sometimes is they go deep and they'll stay down there and they never come back to the basketball. You've got to have people coming into the pockets against pressure defense. Tweedy comes in and gets the easy layup. That's what can happen sometimes when you have the full court press. Well, you bring your defense forward, you get into a double team situation, and if that first pass is successful and you'll run it, Roselle good. Oh, Weasel had beautiful touch for three. Five point lead. Western on top, but a big bucket there from Weaselhead. Port. Best three-point shooter on Western misses there. And on the putback, Nador couldn't put it down. Uh, Nador made an excellent move to the basket, but he couldn't get the ball to go down. So a lid on the basket for both teams here. Just under five and a half minutes to go. Five-point lead for Western. 15 seconds in the shot clock. Weaselhead with the ball. Little fake. Wait around. Grazell lays it up. Charlton Weaselhead. Trying to take this basketball game over as the quarterback. He's going to go and attack the hoop. Tweedy for three off the rim. Weaselhead with five points in the last two possessions. Here's Grozell. And Weston right now has to manage this court. You see Grozell trying to get his players spaced out, get some spacing. And a foul away from the ball that is going to go against Chris Pasley. Pasley just got his, his ball out. 
and committed that foul. You see Dalton is right here against pressure. If you can dribble as point guards can, go right to the hoop. Nobody comes to help. You're going to beat that pressure defense. Hasley's second foul, and Tweedy goes to the line for two shots. 4.51 to go, three-point lead for Western. And Walton's going to come back into the game for the Cats. Hasley will leave. That's an important substitution for Jerry Hemming. Scott Walton has been a bear on the boards all through the second half. He's played an excellent game, worked really hard. Hemming's got him a little breather, and now he's got him down the stretch for the last four and a half minutes. Here's Bell, playing with four fouls, remember? Bell trying to drive in, puts it up. And the foul there on Chris Brown. And right there, you see why it's important that Ernest Bell remain in this basketball game for the Bobcats. He has the ability to square up and threaten you because you can make the 16, 17 footer, but he also has the one-on-one -on -one skill to manufacture his shot and get to the rim. Bell up the line. The foul is starting to, to even out. Brown taking his second there. 10 team fouls on Brandon and eight on Western. And Western with a four point lead. But Brandon's still extending their defense right now. Full court, see Western reverses away and then Port comes into the middle. That's what they want to do. Go away and then bring a player back to the basketball. Tweedy getting it up for Grozel. Brandon trying to force the turnover. Lots of pressure on Grozel. Dishes off now to Tweedy. Back for Grozel. Comes across for Port. Back for Grozel. 12 points in the shot clock, and he hits a clutch three. Let me tell you. Boy, that's a big, hard shot right there. A big, hard. Jimmy Grozel taking it on himself. And Weasel head right back. He wasn't able to hit. And on the rebound, it's Western coming down with the ball. Oh, that was a clutch three from Grozel. He's a clutch player. Little fake here, Grozel with the ball. Deep near the baseline, comes back out. Here's Tweedy. 13 seconds in the shot clock. Port. Tried to move it up and the ball was uh, kicked there by Masters. Timeout on the floor. Grozel, one of the leaders on this Western team for reasons like this. Clutch three, we're back in a moment. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. I'm David Amber. Michael Schumacher claimed his 34th career pole in qualifying for the Malaysian Grand Prix. His brother, Rolf, will start third, while Jacques Villeneuve will start seventh. The race goes live tonight on TSN. That's 1.30 Eastern time. Lots of NHL action as well. On Saturday, let's start with the Bruins at the Canadians' first period. Sergei Samsonov breakaway. Great move onto the back end. He scores one zip bean town. Then Miko Elorantis' blast is stopped, but Samsonov cannot be denied on the rebound. He waits and tickles it. Yeah, 3-1 Boston in the second intermission. Meanwhile, the Maple Leafs are down in Florida playing the Panthers. Game tied at one. Pavel Bore steps in, rockets it past Cujo, his second of the game. He has a hat trick, but the Leafs have tied it up thanks to Hoagland and Antropov. 3-3 in the second period. Sabres and Capitals tied at two in the second period. Penguins are trailing the Lightning 2-1. Mario Lemieux, his 31st goal there. We'll have more second half action coming up right after these words. Hi, could you give me a hand? Uh, not right now. People's thumbs have gotten bigger. Sweetheart, go help your father. Grandpa. That's because they've been rolling their thumbs a lot, playing Tim Horton's Roll Up the Rim to Win. You could win one of 20 Pontiac Aztec all-wheel drive, 100 Sony home theaters, 500 cash prizes of $1,000, 5,000 Royal King barbecues, and millions of Tim Hortons prizes. Everyone ready to roll? Let's do it. World Figure Skating Championship starts on Monday. You can see it on the full CTV network beginning at 9 Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Rod Black and Leo Routens will have all the action. Actually, I don't think Leo does the figure skating. We'll have the final tomorrow. St. FX against Brandon or Western in the championship game. 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific time. Shut up, shut up, shut up. 
Ball comes out of bounds off of Brandon Player. Western will inbound with 24 seconds in the shot clock. And some confusion as to whether or not a timeout was going to be called. There is not, and Tweedy inbounds. By the way, Kwiatkowski back into the game, number 55 for Western. They're a leading offensive player, but he has four fouls. And double dribble called there on Grozel. And uh, Jim Grozel thought the ball got flicked away, but double dribble called. That's exactly what the Brandon Bobcats have to do. You've got to come up with big stops. When you're down seven, three and a half minutes left in the ball game, your defense has to be terrific, and you've got to keep the opposition off the foul line. If Brandon raises the level of intensity but commits fouls, we're not going to have time to dig out of this. Masters dribbles in. Back for Weasel head. Big three. Both the point guards helping out with three-point shots in this game. Weaselhead the latest. That's true true leadership, and Weaselhead just stepping up, taking his team on his shoulders. He's been terrific, especially over the last five minutes. Two threes, as well as a two-point basket for Weaselhead in the last five minutes. Ball lobbed up to Smith, comes in, gets the layup. But now Western has to be very careful here because the whole momentum of this basketball game has shifted to the Bobcats. So they need to work hard to get a high-quality shot and maintain that patience that they have exhibited through the game. It's a two-point lead for Western. Here's Grozel for three. On the rebound, Kwiatkowski missed. Now he pulls it down, and he's fouled. But you see how active Andy Kwiatkowski is. He got to the, to the backboard again off the Grizzell shot, not standing. Missed the tip, got to the other side of the basket, got it again, missed, and then finally was able to get fouled. Look at Kwiatkowski, gives it to Grizzell, and then comes right down the gut against the defense. There he is. He misses it, but he stays with it, keeps it alive. Back up, keep that basketball alive. Finally drew the foul. Weaselhead takes his fourth foul. So he is in the game playing with four fouls. Ernest Bell has four fouls. And Brandon is trailing this game by four. The alley -oop. And didn't quite work. I tell you, that is a risky shot at the best of times. And you're in a very crucial time in the ball game. You make that shot, you've got to get a quality field goal attempt. Ball comes in. Trying to drive here as Nadur puts it back. Kwiatkowski hits. Two points. He's got a lot of poise, Paul. A lot of poise. Doesn't rush anything, lets the game flow to him. Only takes the shots that the defense presents. Weaselhead works it over. Three points. Oh. And a foul. Tyrone Smith hits the three and he'll go to the line. Never want to foul a jump shooter, especially at the arc. It's an opportunity now for four-point play. Take a look outside. Pretty late, gets their late fouls in the act of shooting, turns around, switches up, he's got the fist in the air, drain the shot, now he gets a chance to go and pick up a fourth play on the possession. Smith at the line. And it is a four-point play and a two-point game. Western leads by two. It's a trap. And they are up with the extended defense all over Grozel. And no Mustangs came back to the basketball in time. Grozel had no choice but to call a timeout in that situation. He couldn't find an open pass receiver. 1.48 to go in the second half. Western leads by two. They led by ten at the half. Kwiatkowski having quite a game for Western, 25 points.
So just going back a, a few moments ago, you needed a good possession. Why did Brandon do something like the, the risky alley-oop? Well, because they reacted. Masters cut the baseline and saw the opening, and Weaselhead got drawn into that. But you've got you've to, when you're the point guard, make sure that you get a shot, that you maintain possession. That's something you might do at, at a point in the game early or when the game is wide open but not a tight ball game. And that is going to be an offensive foul, and that is it for Andy Kwiatkowski. He fouls out. That could be huge for Weston, obviously. He's been a terrific player this evening's ball game. Little Kwiatkowski lowers the shoulder, goes along the baseline. Ernest Bell comes over, and you look at the risk that Ernest Bell put himself into, but again, his instinct took over, and he was not about oh. to give an open lane to the basket to Andy Kwiatkowski. The call against Kwiatkowski, Ernest Bell had paid off. That takes some backbone, though. Bell, key player for Brandon, playing with four fouls, puts himself in that position. Well, it's a player's instinct. It's 1.38 on the clock. You're in a battle for survival in terms of getting to the national final. Ernest Bell made a great move. He got there in time. He established position. And Kwiatkowski could be lost to the Mustangs here. 25 points, 20 rebounds. Kwiatkowski had seven double-doubles this year. And tops the 20-point mark for the 19th time. Led the CIAU in scoring, averaging over 22 points a game. But he will watch the rest of this one from the bench, only hoping that he will get a chance to play for a championship tomorrow. Now, Mark Port is in the ballgame, number 12 for Weston. He's an excellent outside shooter, and you've got to keep an eye on him. If Brandon doesn't respect his outside shot, he can hurt. Here's Weaselhead. He is also playing with four fouls, and so too is Ernest Bell. Bell comes up, gets the basket. That was a great move by Ernest Bell. You see why he's the Bobcats leader. Goes baseline, Brown gets turned around, goes up hard, gets pushed from behind by Brown, but has the strength and the ability to complete the shot. There goes Ernest Bell, got hacked, Brown lowered the boom, got Ernest Bell in the in the forearm area. Bell had the strength to complete, but misses the free throw. So it is not a three-point play, but the game is tied at 72 with under a minute and a half to go. Brandon has not led since they took a 3-2 lead early in the game. Roselle gets it underneath. Port is open and finishes. The Port moving down the middle. Brandon defender got turned around. He makes the basket. Keep in mind, Port's in the ball game. He was the substitute for Kwiatkowski. That was a great pass to Port. Bell drives. Offensive foul. He's gone. He's down, he accelerated, he lowered that shoulder. And you got, it's kind of foul, you got to lead with your leg, not with your shoulder. You put that shoulder down, you're going to be at risk on the offensive end. Take a look here, he goes hard, hard. And Dora is held position. And Bell accelerated through him. You go shoulder first, you're going to ask for that whistle of blow. So Bell fouls out. Only 13 points and eight rebounds for Bell. The eight rebounds about on his season average, but the 13 points well below his average of almost 19 points a game. And that's because he's he started playing with foul trouble early in the first half. It's been a frustrating game for Ernest Bell. He's been a great player in the Brandon Bobcat program. A fifth-year senior. This may be his last game if Brandon loses. He's got a smile on his face, but you know his heart has got a pain because he'd like to go out, obviously, a winner tonight and get into the national final. He may not get there, but he has contributed greatly to Jimmy he Jerry Hemmings' program over the years he's been with the Bobcats. Two-point lead for Western. Ten years since Western last won a national title. And they are vying to get there to play for it tomorrow against the defending champion, St. FX. But there's a ways to go yet. Here's Tweedy. 35 seconds left. Two-point lead for Western. Weaselhead steals the ball. Comes in. And he's tied the game. 
He's unbelievable. He has stepped up in the last five, six minutes of this ball game, and he's taken the game over by himself. That was a terrific defensive play. He stuck with the basketball. He lost his balance, and then he went to the goal and drew the foul himself. Look at Weaselhead here. Knocked the basketball, accelerated, got his possession, got his balance, went hard to the goal. The ball goes in, and he draws the foul as well. There's the foul right there by Jimmy Grozell. And Weaselhead at the line can make it a three-point play. The game is tied. Brandon can take the lead for the first time since early in the game when they led 3-2. They are up now by one with under 30 seconds to go. Western will try to work it down for the last kill shot. Here's Grozell. Drives in. Puts it up. And the foul. You see, Jim Grozell came back. He wanted to answer. He said to himself that if Weaselhead's going to take his ball club over, one of the things that Grozell wanted to do was get a shot, get a field goal attempt. You might want to spend time with the basketball, but you're always at risk for the turnover. What Grozell was able to do was penetrate, use his skill to get past the primary defender, and wound up drawing the, drawing the foul. Now he gets an opportunity to get to the free throw line. Well, Charlton Weaselhead took the foul, so he is fouled out of the game. Well, he did some damage before he had the lead, Paul. He deserves an awful lot of credit. Brandon would not be in the situation that they're in right now with 18 seconds left in the game if it wasn't for Charlton Weaselhead. Josh! 18.3 seconds left. One-point lead for Brandon, courtesy of that man. Charlton Weaselhead, before he fouls out, he has a dazzling second half. Uh, Grizel is an excellent free throw shooter. He's great under pressure, does a super job on the free throw line. Jim Grizel has two shots. So Grizel at the line. 85% free throw shooter. Can tie the game here and does. So the game is tied and a timeout called by Brandon. Good timeout by Jerry Hemmings, trying to ice the shooter. You get on the free throw line, you stroke one down, and the opposing coach calls a timeout. You want to break the shooter's rhythm. Brandon, take a full timeout. A full timeout taken by the Cats. 18.3 seconds to go, and Grizel will take one more shot from the line, a shot that could give Western the lead. Uh, Jerry Hemmings right here has several things to entertain. First of all, he's got to talk about what happens if the free throw is made. That means Brandon will be down one. So he's got to talk about the quality of offensive opportunity they want on the offensive end of the floor. He's got to get the team psychologically into a state of poise. They cannot panic. They have to execute. Then depending on whether that shot is made or missed, he's got to determine what he wants to do in terms of getting the clock stopped. If they miss, they got to try to get another possession. Always a difficult choice for coaches, 18 seconds. If you go too late, you only get one shot. You go too early, you may give the opposition a chance to come back the other way. Hey, Jerry doesn't have a mic on, and that's why we can't hear him quite as well as we could hear the Western coach during their huddle. Tomorrow, championship game, 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific time. St. FX, the defending national champions, will go up against the winner of this game that stands at this moment in time, tied at 75. Both teams over the limit. Possession, possession arrow to Brandon, Paul, too. In any situation where the ball gets tied up, it's to Brandon's advantage. Here's Grozell from the line. Can give his team the lead. Got it. 18.3 seconds to go. And Brandon can win it with a basket here. This could be a heartbreaker for Western. And it could be an unbelievable feeling for the Cats. The drive, the basket for Smith. 6.3 seconds to go. Western calls a timeout with three seconds left. That's enough time, Paul, to get something done. 
They needed to get that clock stopped perhaps a second or two earlier, but three seconds is enough to complete a pass and execute an offensive move. What a terrific shot that Smith made going down the middle. It's unbelievable how he got this away. He was covered like a blanket. You see him off the top of the key between his legs. Now he shifts left, goes down, everybody around him, releases the basketball. Tremendous focus and concentration. You see Tweedy up with his hands. He's six foot five. Smith elevated the ball over the reach of the defensive players, both of them. Terrific shot. Western gutted one year ago in the semifinal on a last second play. And they are staring that in the face right now, trailing by one point with 3.6 seconds remaining. You're standing next to him and just in case. Uh, he needs his steady, steady screening action, but he won't have much move. room in the corner. Can't move. Okay. Just no, you're just going to stand. We can't move, right? You're just going to stand in front of him so nobody can jump in front of him. Okay? And then what we're doing is, Brown, you're coming this way to screen for Jim. Okay? Uh, he's thrown it in. Okay? Okay. And then, Jim, you're coming out for the ball here. We're trying to throw that. Brown! Then you take another look back in. Can Brandon kick the legs out from underneath Western for the second year in a row in the semifinal? And now the Cats call a timeout, 30-second timeout. But Jerry Hammonds wanted to see how the court was organized by Craig Boydell's team. He saw something he wanted to go back over with his Bobcats. He'd be back in a huddle, trying to organize him now. Craig Boydell's got a decision to make. Does he respond to that or react to it? Or does he just reconfirm with his team what he talked about before? Give them another chance to concentrate on what their roles are on his inbounds play. Western has one timeout left. Tweedy will inbound. It comes up ahead. This could be it. Off the rim. That's it. And Western is denied again. The Cats are off to the final. chance to win it and in a shot that he will probably remember for quite some time wasn't able to finish well Chris Brown made a great play here using every bit of his height and strength got the basketball in Port's hand tough shot Port just missed it a little bit off target, but tough to be in that situation. Remember, Mark Port had to come in the ball game because Andy Kwiatkowski got his fifth foul and had to leave a little over a minute earlier. Mark Port again with the release, and the clock runs out. Port, the best three-point shooter on Western, but it was a bridge too far that time. And Brandon wins by one. 77-76. They had not led since early in the ballgame. Brandon only had 24 points up on the scoreboard in the first half. So they came alive offensively in the second half, scoring 53 points. What a finish. So it will be the number three ranked Brandon Bobcats facing St. FX, the defending champs, in the final. Back in a moment.
Millions of the world's children suffer from blindness and infection. With biotechnology, we can provide better nutrition to help relieve that suffering. My crop could soon contain more vitamins and nutrients. Biotechnology is developing ways to combat childhood diseases and offering the hope of more nutritious harvests. From medicine to agriculture, it's providing solutions to improve lives today and our world tomorrow. It's roll up the rim time again, and people are getting excited. Happy roll up, Larry. Happy roll up, Roy. Excited about the big event? You bet I'm excited. Who wouldn't be excited about Tim Horton's biggest roll up the rim to win ever? There's 20 Pontiac Aztec all wheel drive, 100 Sony home theaters, 500 cash prizes of $1,000, 5,000 Royal King barbecues, and millions of Tim Horton's prizes waiting to be won. Happy roll up, fellas. Looking sharp, Ed. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior, my life changed. I began to see things differently. I didn't have the desire for alcohol anymore. I began to look at my wife as a, a companion. My family came back together, and Jesus makes a difference. He brings the change. Discover the power to change. Welcome back, Charlton Weaselhead with 13 points and Brandon with 77 points. They are off to the final and Charlton is standing by with Alex J. Wallen. Charlton, Ernie Bell got fouled up. You came in, you led, you shot the reactions. Uh, all night they're up on us, they're in our faces. We couldn't get very many good looks. Had, my, had a deep three, put us up back into the game. Hit another one, got a little closer and from there just it felt good. I got some open looks, and I knocked them down, finally. What change that you played with one heck of a lot of confidence? It's just finally, this is my last year, my fifth year. I put it down on the line last game. You got to put it all down, and just had to put some confidence in myself, and I knew they were going to go down for me. Okay, congratulations. Great job. Thanks. Thanks. Charlton Weaselhead, the point guard for the Brandon Bobcats, and he has a big second half to lead his team to the win. He did a great job. He really played with a lot of heart. He led his team. He delivered the goods. It's going to be an all-time memory for him. He gets a chance now to play for the national championship, and Brandon struggled most of this game. Ernest Bell fought through foul trouble, eventually fouled out of this ball game. Now he gets new life tomorrow. This will be a tough basketball team. They're confident. So they celebrate in Brandon, and they are gutted for the second year in a row at Western. For the second year in a row, it is Brandon who crushed them in the semifinal in the dying moments. The CIAU Men's Basketball Championship on TSN is...